As I mentioned earlier, God's word for our meditation comes from our gospel reading. I will reread another verse for us today. He replied, go tell that fox, I will keep driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. This is God's word. As human beings, it's almost ingrained in us that shortcuts are a good thing. We should desire to take shortcuts. If you have a building project you're working on, the temptation is there to buy the cheaper materials, maybe to skip some unnecessary steps so you can get to the end goal faster. You can save yourself some money. For example, if you're walking down the sidewalk, you might see a shortcut, maybe something like this. The desired path is there to go around the the grass on the inside. But over time, because we like to go from point A to point B in as little time as possible, over time, a shortcut emerges. Does it save you that much time? Probably not, but it's the mindset that's there. An even more extreme example of this is this university campus. This is Ohio State University, but this is the best example I could find. And so what happened is back in the day, this used to just be all grass, and they let the students walk where they pleased. And so over time, these dirt paths would emerge because especially college students, they like to go from their bed to the classroom in as short of time as possible. And so after a while, when the dirt paths emerged, then the campus decided to pave them over. And so you have something that looks like that. We like to take shortcuts. One shortcut that I am faced with frequently is this one. When I go home, so- home. when I go to my parents' house, southbound, around Lake Michigan, I have a decision to make. Do I take 294 or 90? And what the GPS will tell me is that I-90 is the shortcut. It'll say it'll save me at least 45 minutes drive time. It'll save me miles that I have to put on my car. It'll also save me from inevitable construction on 294. But what it doesn't tell you is that as soon as you take I-90 and you get near Chicago, you are slammed with bumper-to-bumper traffic that's going to take you at least another hour, maybe two hours to get through. And so the supposed shortcut around isn't really a shortcut at all. It just makes you want to pull your hair out. And because I have taken that shortcut by mistake a few times, now I know whenever I go south, I'm taking 294 every time. And we are faced with those shortcuts in our earthly lives, ways in which we can maybe skip steps, save time, save money, whatever it helps us save to get to. And maybe we have those moments too in our spiritual lives when we are offered an easy way out and we face these temptations to take the easy path, the path of least resistance. Last week, we saw our Savior Jesus tempted by Satan himself to take a couple shortcuts, a shortcut to satisfy his hunger, a shortcut even to glory, what the devil thought was glory. And today, we see Jesus tempted to take a shortcut by another enemy. The Pharisees, a well-known threat and opposing power to Jesus, came to him and said, leave this place and go somewhere else Herod wants to kill you. And at face value, we might read this and say, the Pharisees are finally coming around. Good for them. They know that Jesus is a good thing on this earth. And perhaps there were maybe one or two deep down, maybe not outwardly, wanted Jesus to be okay. They didn't want to see Jesus be beheaded by the ruler that beheaded his cousin John the Baptist. But more than likely, these Pharisees may have created this lie in order to get Jesus out of their territory because Jesus was the one bringing all of the people to him. And so if they fabricated this lie, they thought he would believe it and maybe make a beeline to Jerusalem where they could unleash their master plan of putting Jesus to death. 
And so they foolishly assumed that Jesus was going to heed their warning, say thank you, and then move on toward Jerusalem. But that's not what our Savior does. Our Savior does not take shortcuts. Instead, he replied, go tell that fox, I will keep driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I will reach my goal. In other words, go tell that crafty, sly ruler that I'm not finished with my work yet. Don't worry, I'll get out of Galilee. I will head to Jerusalem, but not when you want me to go, when the Father says it's time for me to go. Jesus didn't let the threat of dying in Galilee, he didn't let this plot or this trick by the Pharisees deter him from doing the work that was necessary for our salvation. No doubt, Jesus was going to go to Jerusalem, but first, he needed to crush this temptation of taking a shortcut for us. And what about the shortcuts we face? What about the crosses that you and I carry in our lives? In the reading from Philippians, Paul points out the path that Christ laid for us. Jesus paved the way with his cross, taking no shortcuts for our salvation. And when he finished laying out this path that was necessary for him to go, he tells you and I to do this, to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. Jesus tells us to take the path with no shortcuts. He tells us to deny ourselves, our sinful nature, to tell ourselves no. And Paul points out to the Philippians that those who go against the cross and the path of Christ only want to do one thing, indulge themselves, give in to their sinful nature, do what we think we want to do here on this earth. And the crosses we carry for the sake of Christ may look like many different things to each of us. And the temptation is just to throw the crosses down because they're painful and they bring trouble in our lives. But there's one cross that we can never shake on this side of eternity. And it's that sinful nature in us. That sinful nature that constantly wants to take shortcuts, that always wants to take the easy way out, the path that is comfortable and short and sweet. Our sinful nature doesn't want to take the path of Christ because from our earthly point of view, it's going to be difficult. To use the analogy I used earlier, it would be like taking I-294 around Chicago. Yes, it's going to be traveling. Or yes, it's going to be challenging, rather. It's going to add more miles. It's going to seem like it's longer. And sure, there's going to be some construction along the way. But taking the supposed shortcut of I-90, eventually you're going to slam into that sin that wants you to indulge yourself just in hopes and a promise that you're going to reach that glory just that little bit faster. No, Paul tells us to follow the path of Christ. Following the path of Christ means we will bear crosses and we must do what is necessary, not what is easy. It means to tell the whole world and most importantly ourselves, no. No, I will not take that shortcut in, in order to satisfy the earthly desires that I have. No, I will not drop the heavier crosses that break me and instead just keep those little ones in my pocket that just pinch me a little bit. The path that Christ followed to Jerusalem meant he was going to die by the hands of those that God again and again sent prophets to save, but they didn't want to listen. Jesus was just another in a long list of prophets who came and said, repent of your sins, you are taking shortcuts, that's not how God works. But they didn't want it. Jesus wanted to gather them under his protecting arms, but they pushed him away so far as death. And when we reach Holy Week, we will see Jesus enter Jerusalem finally when God said it was necessary, but not as a ruler, but as a humble sacrifice. 
While all of those around him, even the disciples, will be chanting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, in tears, will be preparing to bear the ultimate cross for your sins and mine. God the Father is all in on your salvation. God gives grace on top of grace. He gave his son to save us from our sin, to pave the road that is absolutely necessary for your salvation and mine. Jesus never once took a shortcut to save himself some earthly pain and suffering. And because of that, you and I are saved from an eternity of pain and suffering. And if Christ was all in for us, and we are to follow the path of Christ, that means we are to be all in too. That means we don't get to pick and choose the things we like about being a Christian because it's easy, because it's safe. It means taking on all the crosses. It means embodying everything that means to be a Christian because it is necessary. And because on this earth our short little lives may be difficult, they may be full of construction, but you know what? That's nothing compared to an eternity of life and blessings and grace given to us by our Savior. No temporary earthly shortcut or promise of glory is worth missing out on an eternity of glorious and blissful peace with our Savior who bore the greatest cross for us. Amen.